you have to remember you're a guest in that country. So you try and fit in any way you can. So mm. you embrace what the culture is. Meet Tony, a British national with Italian roots who was raised in Scotland and for the last 10 years he has been living in Malaysia. Tony shared how to handle the Malaysian I'll do it tomorrow attitude, the best ways for foreigners to socialize in Kuala Lumpur and why Malaysians are constantly asking how much do you earn? I'm Max, an entrepreneur and YouTuber. Let's dive in. What was your, your first impressions about the place? I got off a plane. I was starting a job on the, the Monday. I think I arrived on a Thursday and you jump in a taxi and you go, take me to this hotel where I was staying. I had no idea where I was mm. staying. You show up at this hotel and the hotel can only be described as horrible. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my God, what am I doing here? You know, <laughs> but got up the next morning, went into the office and they, they were saying, oh, how's the hotel? And I'm like, it's not the best hotel. Like, and they're like, oh, we're sorry about that. But, you know, it's kind of central to where you need to be. So I lived there for a month, six weeks, found an apartment. But that first six weeks was phenomenal for me because I walked everywhere. I got, mm. I, you know, I went to explore and I would try the local food and go to the Mamax and the, the small stalls outside. And I was like, this place is amazing. I love this. I think it's one of those that you either, you love it or you hate it. I don't <laughs> think there's an in-between. I was blown away by the size of the place. Uh. It's just enormous. I mean, I've been in Shanghai, Shanghai's big. This is probably on, on a par with, with Shanghai, just I prefer here to Shanghai. You know, Shanghai was amazing for me. I loved the three years there, but here was just a different level. Lifestyle wise, what's the best? I think the most obvious answer is probably the weather and the food. It's probably the most common answer, yeah. but it genuinely is. I mean, every day, 30 degrees, <laughs> it's hot. Even when it rains, it rains for half an hour and yeah. you can plan things here like you can go right I'm going to do this today because you know the weather's going to be whereas in the UK you cannot plan anything because mm. you don't know what the weather's going to be like but the big thing for here for here's the food you know they you can get any kind of food any day of the or, or night you know what's your favorite I love uh, nasi lemak or mee goreng you know that you can't beat that it's hard to beat that yeah uh, it's just easy comfort food and you can get it anywhere you know, again, there'll be good stalls and bad stalls, but li literally you go anywhere and you can find that type of food, you know, and it's so tasty. Is it anything that you don't like or kind of still not get used to? <laughs> the tomorrow will do attitude. You know, they're not in a hurry to get things done. Hmm. There, there's not a simple way of doing things. If there's a hard way of doing it, Malaysia will find it, you know. It's, <laughs> nothing's quite as easy as some, maybe some other com countries. But, you know, the, it's so advanced in some ways, so lacking in others. You know, where one of the brilliant things here is you can use a touch and go card almost mm. anywhere. Yeah. But, you know, to get something done, you need paperwork that's coming out your ears. You need to get it notarized. You need to get it certified. And you can go and they'll say, like, just something silly, like, oh, you don't have this bit of paperwork. I'm like, well, you never told us we needed that. When did that come into effect? Oh, that came into effect this morning. <laughs> You're like, oh, how do you expect me? You know? <laughs> so just simple things like that, maybe. It's not a bad thing, but it's just, uh, you have to adjust. Mm. Because being British, you know, you're like very efficient. This needs to be done. The other thing that maybe annoys a lot of people here is the lack of a queue system. Mm. Whereas the British are very, oh, we must queue up. You know, you have to stand in the queue. Whereas Malaysia will just, or Malaysians will just go, you know what, I'm not waiting in the queue. I'll just walk to the front. Yeah. And they, I think they interact with humans the way they drive. They don't, they don't want to wait. They want to get one car in front and then they go slow. Do you drive here or no? I did drive here. I, I sold my car about a year ago because I was spending money and I was never driving. Like, because mm. my office is very close to home and I've, I've got typical Italian Vespa. So I just in the last year, I've just started doing grabs. Yeah. It's just more economical. How was it for you to, to start driving here? I loved it because mm. I, I'm used to driving anywhere. Uh -huh. So the first day I got here, I kind of knew I wanted a car. So I rented a car here for the first two years and then I bought a car. Mm. But I, I've had no problem driving here. Mm. You just have to drive like everybody else and you fit in, you yeah. know? Any like cultural shocks that you had when you arrived? Yeah, I think when you come to a city or a different country, you have to remember you're a guest in that country. So you try and fit in any way you can. So mm. you embrace what the culture is and Ramadan. And, you know, I understand the, the whole, uh, you know, the fasting and 
the, the religious part of being here in Malaysia. I mean, you're, you've got the, the, the Malaysian side, you've got the Chinese side, you've got the Indian side. You've, so you've got to adapt to all those different cultures. And I've got such a, a diverse mix of friends that help you through that, mm. that it makes it so easy to live here. And, you know, one of the good things here is the food is incredible, <laughs> you know, and that's one thing we do in, our, in, in the social group. We, we have different, like, parts off to that. And one of them is a food group. And every Saturday morning we try to do something different or set up something different so the members can all go and try different foods. Just having the local friends helps you fit in so much easier. Yeah. A lot of expats maybe stay in their own bubble, mm. whereas I, I like to get out of my comfort zone and yeah. experience new things, you know. What's the Malaysian's attitude towards money? Because you're in financial services. It's weird here. Everybody wants to know what you earn. Mm. And everybody wants to know how much that cost. You know, if you turn up with a car, oh, how much did that cost? Or if you've got a new phone, oh, how much did that cost? And you're like, well, I really want to tell you that, you know? Uh -huh. But there are very, very wealthy you know, locals here, and to which part tend to be good prospects for our industry. I think Malaysia's getting better. When I first moved here, the, the salaries weren't very high, but I think they're moving into that category now because the cost of living's going up. So the price, the, you know, everybody's wages has to, has to, to go up with that. There's still quite a disparity between the, like a shop worker and a, you know, someone in a, in, a, in a better job. But yeah, no, I think it's getting better all the time. This uh, uh, question's about like how much it costs. In Singapore, people do kind of similar, yeah. Yeah. It's always like, oh, how much this costs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind of find it's like, I don't know, it's like people are curious about how, yeah. I don't know, there's people compare the prices. It, it, it might be because they're, they're, they're maybe not used to seeing something. I don't know what it is. They just, the first thing they ask, how much was that? <laughs> or, you know, oh, where do you stay? Oh, I stay in this tower. Or oh, how much do you pay in rent? And you're like, mm, I don't really want to tell you, you know, because you, you're never sure how they're going to react, yeah. you know? So I guess that's just part of them. You know, they, they, they're very curious. If you want to know how much I earn from my YouTube channel, I actually shared it in this video. On top of that, I told how I met my Malaysian viewers in Kuala Lumpur and also explained how I would approach starting a YouTube channel if I did it from scratch in 2024. I put the link to the video in the description. Go watch it and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Is there a question about like how old are you? Like people in Singapore, it's like easy. Yeah. They're easy to ask like how old are you? Yeah, it's like normal. It's, again, it's, a, it's another question people ask is, how old are you? And you're like, mm, you don't really want to ask me how old I am, you know? Yeah. And then you tell them, they're like, no, you're never 50. And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm 50, yeah. <laughs> you know? But even you, you go back to the, the curiousness when we were in Shanghai, at that time, we, we lived in an apartment and they had the supermarket downstairs. My kids were very young and we would go shopping and people would stop you to have a look in your shopping basket because they were curious what you were buying, what oh. food were you eating? And then they wanted because to- Because you're a foreigner. Because you're a foreigner. And they were like, what's that you're buying? Or, you know, why are you not eating local? But well, we did eat all local food, but they would stop and they wanted to touch the kids' hair because they'd never experienced like that type of, you know, hair before. Yeah. And used to drive my wife crazy. She's like, I don't want people touching my children. I'm like, it's just them being curious and wanting to know yeah. what that's like. And but that, as I say, that was '97, so it was years ago. It was a long time. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's it's different. Totally now. different now. Yeah. But I like imagine. ten years ago, I was in Shanghai first time, and people actually asked me selfies. Like I could just go <laughs> just go around the street, like just walk around, and people yeah. like approach me. Like yeah. they don't speak English. They used yeah. not to speak English. Yeah. But maybe I guess it's different now. But like selfie thing is like was it's crazy. It's big, yeah. It's crazy. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. no, it's uh, different. People want to are just curious. Yeah. You know, we, I think humans are curious by nature, aren't we? Yeah. They want to know everything. Are there any like annoying stereotypes about Malaysia from like foreigners or from the West? Service industry is getting better, but it's probably not where it should be. And when you're going somewhere, and I think that can lead to a bit of frustration if the you don't get the service and people maybe don't understand that maybe that person's having a bad day, you know, and it leads to maybe people being rude. And I hate to see somebody being rude. There's no need for it. You know, I like it when it doesn't cost you anything to have manners. And I think sometimes a lot of people forget that everybody's a human being. Just treat people the way you want to be treated. And I've, I saw some of that in, in restaurants and cafes and it's, it's not nice. I guess it's more out of 
people get easily frustrated because I think the service you get here is maybe not the same as you would get in Singapore. Yeah. You know, in Singapore, the, the service seems to be fantastic. You come to Malaysia, and I think it's maybe just more about education. Mm. You know, and I think restaurants need to do more to educate their staff on how to service the public better, if you like. Mm. I don't know if that's the answer you're, you, you, you're looking for, but that's probably the biggest frustration, I think, for, for expats that move here, mm. is the service industry is probably not as good as it should be. Mm. And that leads to frustration, and it leads to maybe a wee bit of rudeness. And, but as I say, there's no excuse for rudeness. I guess because you kind of you expect from Malaysia because it's a very developed country. Yes. Yeah. Like the, the GDP is, is like number three, I think, yeah. after Singapore and Brunei. So you expect it to be like this level. Mm. And sometimes it's not there. So no. that's why. Because but it's a pretty wealthy country. Already. It is getting a lot better. I mean, 10 years ago when I first moved here, it's a totally different city mm. in the last 10 years. <clears throat> Things have improved massively. Mm. And all credit to the Malaysians for doing that, you know, I mean, they're doing very well, doing very well. I think um, politically, still be a bit of a, a minefield here, especially uh, pre-COVID and during COVID, it was, everybody had an opinion, mm. but everybody had a lot more time on their hands, you know. Um, but it's a, it's a fantastic city. I would encourage anybody that if you want to come, come. Yeah. You know, come and explore and, and just live it for yourself and see how fantastic it is, you know. I mean, like, you can go anywhere. You, you, it's a hub to go anywhere. You're in Langkawi in 40 minutes. You're in Thailand in an hour, Vietnam in two hours. You could be in Bali in three hours. You can be in Perth, Australia in five hours. So it really is that global hub to go anywhere in, in Asia. So, yeah, from that point of view, it's fantastic. What's the maybe under the radar spots, like, to visit in Malaysia? Probably... If you go over to the east side of the country, you know, you've got some fantastic islands that are only a 15-minute boat ride. Uh, like one of my favourites, there's a place called Alangs Rawa. And when you get to Tringanu, you get on a, a wee speedboat for 15 minutes and you're in almost looks like the Maldives mm. of Malaysia. And it's probably one of the best kept secrets because they've only got maybe 10 little chalets, but the food's incredible. But once you're on that island, you, you, there's, no, there's nothing really to do apart from snorkeling or, you know, maybe a, a bit of sunbathing, read a book. But it's the perfect place to get away, unwind, put your phone in the drawer and just mm. relax. I love Redang, Redang Island. Mm. Stunning. Again, it's like crystal clear water and white sandy beaches. You know, where are you going to get that anywhere else in the world? So they would be my two hotspots if you wanted to go for, yeah. a, for a, a quick getaway. It's... it's you can either fly to uh, Tringanu or drive maybe four hours, get on a ferry, and within 45 minutes, you're in mm. one of the most beautiful islands that you could imagine. What would be your tips for foreigners coming to Malaysia, how to socialize? I think the first thing you have to do is maybe join, for example, um, when we first came here, there was the Scottish Society and there was the Irish Society. And we went to a few events that we had heard about on social media to... So the Irish organised a, a night in the bar and it was an Elvis night. They had an Elvis, Elvis impersonator. They put on free drinks for, for anybody coming. So we joined that night and that was quite good at helping us integrate and make, make friends. The Scottish Society, equally, they have the Highland Games. They have the St Andrews night. They have their Burns night. And again, a lot of friends I met through that. One of the other ones was... Again, it was a way back 10 years ago that there's a, an expat magazine here called Expat Go and they ran expat mingles. So I met, I've got like a core of some really, really good friends that I've had for, for about the 10 years I've been here. And that's where I met them. I met them on the, the expat mingle. Still friends to this day. Oh, nice. So I would say contact your, your kind of your, your local societies, like the ABWM uh, Association of British Women. They help a lot of expat wives here. And then your, your, your Irish society, your Scottish society. I think the Italians have a big community here. The mm. Welsh have a good community here. So I would say contact those guys and then meet other people through that. What part of you is Italian, 
Scottish and Malaysian maybe now. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I am probably 90% Italian, 5% Scottish and 5% oh. Malaysian. Oh, maybe, right. maybe, okay. maybe not um, okay. as so little as that. But so your identity mostly Italian? Yeah, yeah I, right. I feel that's where my home is. I, Italy will always be home for me. Yeah. Even though born, raised in Edinburgh, and I love Edinburgh, I love Scotland, I love being part of being Scot Scottish, but Italy's home. Mm. It always will be. You know, I just have that affinity with it. What's their, your main three principles in life? Something like for you, you it's, well, it's really important. Honesty, number one, honesty. Just be honest. And my, and my job, you know, you, you have to be honest. You're, you're dealing with people's money. You know, so that honesty and integrity is, is a key thing. I think um, you've got to be, as I said to you before, be kind. You don't know what anybody's going through in life. Just say hello to people and say thank you and please and be courteous. It costs nothing for manners. And in Malaysia, it's easy because people are pretty responsive. If you smile, they smile it's back. Great. If you hi, they it's hi great. back. It's great. You just, you can walk. Like I do uh, walks every morning. And you see lots of different people on the walks and you just acknowledge people. It should raise your head and, you know, hi or, or whatever you're going to say. Yeah. Whereas you, you go to somewhere like London and nobody passes the time of day. But same in Ireland. When you go to Ireland, everybody says good morning to you. Oh, yeah. And it makes you feel good. You're like, it, wow. Yeah, so a little true. bit of kindness, I think, goes a long way. So honesty, integrity and kindness would be the three, yeah. the three things for me. If you want to hear more stories of inspirational, fun and impactful people, watch the next video. I promise you will enjoy it. No, seriously, you will.